Get a listen to some of this music. Gorgeous, isn't it? <laughs> Hello, friends. My name is Brandon Dayton. I am your humble narrator, and welcome to a Dayton Dissects of Cyrilim. This will be my first scripted review, so I do hope that it shows an increase in quality. Uh, please don't hesitate to comment with any criticism during the review. So, Cyrilim is the satanic Pokemon experience that your parents warned you about. You take control of a wizard, select one of the five magic schools to specialize in, and summon an ever-expanding team of creatures to traverse a roguelike RPG full of retro pleasure, but also rife with rage-worthy pitfalls. Will it work its magic on you, or is it completely unholy? Let's take a deeper look at Cyrilim. The controls are extremely dialed back. WASD to navigate the world and menus, E to confirm, Q to cancel. This can lead to some wonky moments when playing with equipment, but overall, uh, it's fair enough. <laughs> the game can be played entirely with the left hand, which is great, because my right hand needs a break. Meh, meh. You will start the game with a creature based on your magic specialization, and get a second creature of your magic specialization after completing some starter quests. Professor Oak only ever gave me one freebie, freaking cheapskate. Your character and your monsters level up independently of each other. Every five levels or so, your creatures will gain the ability to wear an additional piece of equipment, while your character simply unlocks a new creature squat slot. To get a creature into your slot, calm down, hentai lovers. <laughs> You'll need to do battle and extract cores from three creatures of the exact same type. Cores can only be ex extracted when the creature is low on health. Wait, six creature slots? Capturing the cores of creatures low on health? This is all sounding pretty familiar. Fortunately, Cyrilem does have its own set of tricks and traps, which sets it apart from its Poke Cousin. Now you see, because of the Pokemons, the creatures retain damage through every battle, but in Cyrilim, your creatures are healed after every fight with a delicious jello pudding pop. Sorry for that <laughs> outburst. Uh, this is nice because you can blow your load for each and every battle, but it also kind of makes the game lack depth because items are really only used for crafting and enchanting, which means after a time, once you have all your creatures fully equipped, all the items become absolutely worthless. Uh, there's an option to turn on permadeath at the beginning of the game, which deletes your save file if all your creatures are wiped out, but with only a heal spell to keep your creatures on their feet, it is basically an exercise in futility. As a final option, you can reincarnate your dead creatures as a new monster with a fraction of their experience. Uh, I'd really enjoy the customization there. Uh, that's a pretty interesting choice, and it's generally an option that I have turned on. But wait! There's more! You're able to construct various buildings in order to expand your realm to new environments and discover new and stronger monsters to summon as your own. The construction rituals use the same resources as the summoning rituals, which can lead to a bit of a, a resource grind, but to break up the monotony, you're assigned a variety of tasks. This can range from finding an item to defeating an amount of a certain enemy. Not the most innovative, uh, <laughs> but any attempt to mix things up is appreciated. Each dungeon has plenty of breakable items and buffs. Some people will still find it relatively monotonous, but if you enjoy Pokemon style collection and Final Fantasy style battles, you might just find yourself hooked. To sweeten the deal, you'll get to find and craft spells and equipment to aid your creatures. But it's not all roses and sunshine. Get a listen to some of this music. Gorgeous, isn't it? Another issue I have is the amount of reskins. It's basically like a digitalized version of Buffalo Bill's basement. <laughs> you found a dragon? Great! What color is it? It might be a dragon queen, or a dragon revenant, or a dragon guardian, or a dragon sentinel, or a dragon soldier, or a dragon general, or a dragon pope, or a dragon ballerina! Okay, the last two might be a stretch. They do all have their own unique abilities and stats, so I think that 
reskinning the family is, is a pretty big missed opportunity. But worse than either of these two are the event battles, which can look like an item or an NPC, and once you're pulled into one, you're pitted against a full team of higher level creatures. Once you're in, there is no retreat. So just try to enjoy watching your two, your team of two being pummeled to death. With permadeath on, needless to say, it becomes a pretty enraging concept. Serialim is a game with a lot to love, but it also has its fair share of troubles. For the low price of $10, lovers of dungeon crawlers will certainly get their money's worth. Just try to ignore that the fact there is a permadeath option. Nobody is impressed by it. <laughs> Just enjoy collecting them all. No trading needed. Serialim is an extremely passable game with a lot to offer. In conclusion, I would like to offer you my score breakdown. For the controls, I've given it a 7 out of 10. It is definitely minimal, but I find it to be serviceable. The fun factor, I've given a 7 out of 10 as well. It is a bit grindy for my tastes, but some people will probably uh, have a ball with it. <laughs> The difficulty is a 10 out of 10, definitely. If you want it to be, you can turn permadeath on and uh, never complete the game ever, ever. <laughs> the, the replayability is a 6 out of 10. The creatures don't really change between the, play, the different um, replays of the game. And the magic schools don't offer as much variety as one would expect. Basically, you're just enhancing spells that you can already use. Uh, so I've given the replayability a 6 out of 10. The innovation is an 8 out of 10. We've definitely seen something like this before, but this game surely tries to make it its own, and for that it should be applauded. The aesthetic side, we have the graphics, which I've given an 8 out of 10. I find most of the sprites pretty well done, especially things like the treasure golem. I love him. And the music, I've given a 4 out of 10. It is so trill at some points that it's... Ugh, gross. <laughs> a lot of the music is pretty good, but it just... There's, there, there are those points. Oh my. <laughs> the sound effects, I've given a 5 out of 10. Generally just whack, whack, whack. There's not a, a lot of varied sound. Um, they don't go above and beyond. It's, it's average at best. Uh, the story is a 7 out of 10. They did implement a story. While it's not um, the greatest, most original thing I've ever laid my eyes on, it definitely has its own twists and turns and uh, is, is interesting enough, I suppose, watching your king wizard develop. The level design I'm giving a 6 out of 10. It is completely random and completely lovely. Um... I, I rather like the generation of the different worlds, and there's a lot of different environments that you can crawl through um, instead of just being dungeons all the time, always. So, uh, definitely uh, a good attempt at a game by Thylacine Studios. This game totals out at a 68 out of 100 for me. I think it's a pretty fair score. Uh, it doesn't do that much to impress me but it's definitely serviceable uh, for your creature taming needs. So, this has been another di Dayton Dissects. I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator, and this has been Sierra Lim. If you did enjoy, I hope you will like, comment, and or subscribe. And until the next time, friends. Bye-bye! One, two, three, four. Goodbye, goodbye, see you again. Goodbye, goodbye, see you, my friends.